Hey, hello, and welcome to Good Knit Kisses. I'm so glad you're here today. Uh, we are working on crochet today. It is Crochet Thursday. If you're coming on to the replay, thank you for joining us. You can um, comment as if you know I'm doing this live, and of course, I'm going to come back and read your comments. If you have a question for me, be sure and write replay and write your question. I'm actually going to get to a replay question today. I don't get them as often as I would think I would. So y'all get those questions and I'll answer your questions. If I don't get to them um, during the week when I think I can like just answer them immediately. If it's a long winded kind of question, I'll answer it on a broadcast. So welcome to the live viewers. Thank you for joining me. Be sure and write your name, where you're from. Uh, let me know how you found me. If you're new, I love to know that stuff. So we're going to cover a few things today. And uh, yesterday we did t-shirt yarn. Um, if you read back on the comments, I have not responded to this person, but someone watched it about 18 minutes in. It was a 38 minute broadcast. And, um, you know, the thing is, is this is a live broadcast. It's not an edited video. This is not how I would put a video together on YouTube. Now, if you follow me on YouTube, you know that if you listen to me talk while I'm working on it, I'm actually giving you some advice and ways to remember. And the reason why I feel like I can't cut all that stuff out is because everybody learns different, right? Would you agree? And so when you listen to someone talk, you might hear something that doesn't help you. But if you listen long enough, you're going to hear something that helps you. Guess what? I don't discriminate between learning styles. I don't go, okay, I'm going to talk about this learning style first and this one next and this one next. So I'm not going to comment and be rude to the person. And I don't want anybody else to be rude. But I did get a comment yesterday that I have to say, you know, it was a little frustrating to see and read. And that's fine. Everybody's welcome to their opinion. But I was just a little like, I was a little taken back. Like, Okay, I know I'm going slow teaching this t-shirt yarn, but I'm doing it in the process. I think she expected me to do it like I would do in a video. Like I would have everything prepared to the side and then like, and cut. Oh, now we're here. You know, but if someone's working along with me, it's kind of nice to like have that flow. And the archive is there for you. And there is a fast forward button. So if you are watching on the replay, please don't criticize how fast I'm going Use your little fast forward button. And I'm not trying to be snippy. I'm just trying to say, please be respectful of me. I'm going to be respectful of you. I'm not going to trash you. I think you're fine. I think you learn different than other people. But it might be relevant for someone else. So if it doesn't work for you, I'm sorry. So sorry, I had to go on that rant in the very beginning. <laughs> Thank you for people who give me some love and likes. Even if you don't like me, I still love you. I just want you to understand why I do what I do. Because it's not to help you. It's to help the person next to you. It's like sitting in class. I'm a teacher. So I'm not doing my job as a teacher. Now, not everybody on YouTube has a teacher mentality. But I do. And I care about you. And I care about that person right next to you. Or the person behind you who can't see because you got big hair. So... so. Or the person behind me who can't see because I'm six foot one. I'm in your way. <laughs> I'll be like. <laughs> okay. <sighs> I had to get that off my chest. Thank you for the loves and the ha-has and the likes. I love it. <laughs> Even if you don't comment, I'm so glad that you have some sympathy for me. <sighs> Thank you, Renee. Woo! Okay, I had to get off my chest because I feel like, you know, I'm not going to let someone steal my joy, but I think you need to know what's going on. And I have joy. I don't know if you can tell, but I do. I am joyful, but things do get to me, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, and those peeps in the front row, <laughs> Ellie. Welcome, y'all. I have not welcomed you individually. I'm going to say hi real quick before we get started here. Ray Lynn, good morning. I'm so glad you're here. And, hun, I hope you're having a good day. I know that you've been in some pain, and I just love you, and I'm so sorry. And I hope that you have a great day with some good news and encouragement today. Betty, good morning. Ellie, Ellie, hiya. I love seeing your face every morning. I see a little blip up on there when you say something to your little face. And you, is it your husband or boyfriend? And then Renee, thank you. Marcola, good morning. And Candy Annie, good morning. And 
Yes. Oh, Raylan. Yes. Thank you. I wouldn't be a knitter or loom knitter without you. Oh, thank you. Betty Smith. Love our time together in the morning. I look forward to it. <laughs> Working on other crafts. Off topic. Oh, 50th anniversary to Star Trek. Woohoo! Live long and prosper. Um, <laughs> I'm a little too exuberant for Spock, but, uh, yeah, Shatner and I can, uh, hang out. Um, <laughs> oh, that's your husband, Joe. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Ellie anniversary. I got that. I got that. All right. I'm gonna reach for some coffee. Anybody uh, getting caffeinated with me this morning or got their tea ready? I'm gonna take me a sip and then we'll get started. All right. Here we go. Sorry. I just lean right into that camera. It's nice. See all the glory there. Um, <laughs> okay. So it's this morning crochet, hopefully I'm not going over too far. Crochet, crochet, crochet today. Boo. Okay. So we, <laughs> we did this last week. We have, oh, Candy Annie seems like I can't watch it today. Buffering. I'm sorry. Come join me later. Okay. Love you. Oh, you're having coffee with me, Mitzi. Mitzi. Good morning. I'm so glad you're here. Okay. So we did this last week, kind of a randomosity sample. And if you saw last week, you'd know why. Uh, normally I line these all up and I was just, I was just flowing with the main stitch pattern. So we were just going, which actually is kind of cool. And which leads me to one of my things is I'm going to make the, this is the marshmallow blanket. It's a, it's a texture stitch. And so I've got the Karen cake yarn. Why do I not have it right here to go? Here's the Karen cake. Boom. But if you saw my video on it and you've probably not missed the cool Michael's yarn, the Karen special yarn for their hundred year anniversary, Go out and look at it. It's fun. I have a video, a live video on it. It buffered too, but <laughs> that was the connection in the store. I couldn't help that. Anyway, so I'm taking one of those, the macaroon color, and I'm making a marshmallow shawl. I mean, it's not really marshmallow. I'm doing it with a smaller hook. I'm doing one strand of yarn, and then I'm starting at like 60 inches, and then I'm going to go in like a triangle. So let's see what happens. Um, and then, of course, I'll share with you guys on how to do it, right? So, um, yeah, Candy Annie, we'll just see you later on the replay. I mean, you're welcome to stay, but I don't know how it will buffer for you. Um, hey, good morning. I see Carol has jumped on. She is now here. She missed my rant. So, Miss Carol, you're going to have to go back and watch that rant. Mm-hmm. First couple minutes. So, um, anyway, if you see Good Nick Kisses, I don't know if I said this, if you see Good Nick Kisses comment, it is Carol. So, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, and I did stay up. It's great to stay up late. Good morning, good morning to you. Okay, so if you have seen my YouTube channel, you will know what this is. Um, if you've watched any of the crochet videos. If you have not, go to goodknitkisses.com slash, I'm sorry, youtube.com slash goodknitkisses. And then um, you can, well, first of all, please subscribe and hit the uh, button, the gear button or whatever to get the emails because you're going to be seeing some more come along there. And... Um, also, you can go to playlist on that page and go to the crochet playlist and you'll be able to see this. I teach how to read patterns. One of my replay questions from last week, I think it was Ellie, um, she was asking about pattern reading and I have these two crochet books. I'm trying to think if I did a third one. I have these two crochet books that Leisure Arts gave me permission to um, teach. And I have a video that thoroughly goes over that. You make this wash rag dishcloth. We say wash rag at our house. Um, this this dish cloth. And this is a solid, although it's a variegated cotton yarn. But I also show you how to make it, how to change color and do like a striped version and then do the edge around it. So, um that that is on there and that is found the pattern is found in um i can't believe i'm crocheting oh i'm sorry that's flipped and you can't see it but it says i can't believe i'm crocheting it has right and left-handed instructions in it um it's a beginner's guide but updated and better so they've they've redone it let me i'm trying to find the publishing date on this um when is the publishing date? Sorry, I would tell you, but it's not here. The ISBN number is um, 13, I'm sorry, 
1-6-0-1-4-0-0-8-9-5. So you can catch the replay and watch that back, but that's what that is. Um, let me go find the washcloth. Here it is. I can show you the pages that they gave you permission for. And um, I'm going to flip the camera and show you what it is. And I'll show you the other book. And then, because I really want you to know about them. Okay. So you have to go to my YouTube page to get them, but you can find them in a playlist real easy. Or you can hit the search button, not the top search button, but look at the lower search button. You'll see like a little icon for the hourglass or the magnifying glass and search crochet and you'll find all my videos. Okay. I'm going to flip. All right. So this is the project. I'm going to flip again so you can see it again. This is, oops, sorry, hit my, hit my tripod. I can't believe I'm crocheting and I like to use my pointer here. Um, we are, um, we've got photos for right and left-handed. I'm going to flip to the instructions that I am okay to show. Um, this is, um, project, by the way, this is not a sponsored video. I'm just, I happen to be showing it cause someone asked the question. So this is a dishcloth project. It's about a 10 by 10 or 26 and a half centimeter uh, squared. And then you just use a medium weight cotton. I showed how to do this one. So see how it's striped. And um, I actually alternated and I did the darker one as the edge. So um, where you see the yellow, it's green. And, um, or I'm sorry, where you see the white, it's actually green. And then this one here that I did is um, like if you did the pattern as a solid. And it actually shows you if you do solid, you need a ball. If you do stripe, you need two balls because you got to combine the two. But then you can make a couple of dish dishcloths with it. And it's an H size hook or five millimeters. So it goes through <clears throat> how to make it. And it's just a one page deal. So if you want to get started um, on crocheting, you can do this. And this is one that I talked about last week where you go in the, um, I think it was, it's been a while. Yeah. Back loop only front loop only. Okay. And we're doing a half double crochet. So see how it has this cool waffle look to it. Now this one in the video, I'm showing them new, like I hadn't washed them at all. So this is washed and been used like crazy. It's actually the favorite dishcloth in my kitchen. This one and the other one, the other one's in use. So I didn't want to bring a wet, <laughs> wet rag in here, but, um, it works really well and, um, it's real scrubby. I mean, you could scrub the, the bathroom with it if you wanted to. <laughs> so, um, there's that. And then the other one I have, let me flip um, I don't have the samples because my kids, my girls like to steal this and, and my samples and used it for their American Girl dolls. So um, this is also on my YouTube channel on how to read a pattern. And they have videos too, um, online tutorials, so you can check theirs out as well. Um, but mine was a permission for a particular motif. We did this one right here. I didn't want to do a square because there's lots of square motifs, but we did this one here. So it's a beginner's guide to crochet motifs. And again, this is Leisure Arts. And if you want to know the ISBN on this one, it's uh, 978-1464712678. And that's Leisure Arts. And you are making... Let's see. I have to find the page. I didn't, I didn't flip to it in advance. This one. Okay, so I have permission to show the patterns that I'm showing, but not anything else. Okay, this is actually several pages because they really spread it out. And, oh, thank you, Carol. She has put the link on for the dishcloth. This is the Amish Hexagon Afghan. Okay, so what we do is I'll show you how to make one of these hexagons, and then I show you how to join the hexagons. Okay, now it's up to you if you want to make them solid, if you want to make them uh, three toned or two toned or whatever. But these are this is with three colors, and look how pretty this is. Okay, give us some likes or love or give us your comments. What do you think of this Amish uh, hexagon afghan? Um, so we talk about um, how to work it. You're going to um, begin your hexagon motif working in one chain to the beginning chain, and then you switch. Um, you know, you uh, join to the first stitch when working in rounds um, and then you add a new color and then you do a whip stitch. So if you want to see all that and you're doing it through the back loop. Okay, so this one, it gives you your shopping list. You need a medium weight yarn. Most people have a medium weight yarn, um, you know, 170 yards. Um, now, if you want to do the whole blanket with three colors like this, then you would pick for your color A, which is purple, you would pick, get eight skeins that's 100 yards um, or uh, 156 meters. 
and then <clears throat> color B, which is this magenta or kind of pinkish color that's the in the middle sort of color, that is four skeins, and then color C is this little you know pop of color in the middle here, and that's dusty rose, and that's two skeins, so two, four, eight, not six, two, four, eight. So your biggest color is going to have eight, your medium is going to have four, and your other is two. And then a crochet hook is I or five and a half millimeters. So it's one size up from what we did on the dishcloth. And then you need a yarn needle because that's for whip stitch and all that stuff. Um, yeah, each motif is about four inches or 10 centimeters. And then it goes through, we go through the whole thing. So chaining up, making the middle, putting on the other color, joining that up, um, adding in the other and then talking about how to do it. Now, some people can look at photos like this and, and it's fine for them. But if you're someone like me where you need to see it, like, like physically, the, the picture between the picture and sound and some explanation, you'll see my video doing it. Here's some other examples. Look how I want to show you this. Look how crazy it is, like different looking this is. Like imagine a whole blanket in this versus a whole blanket in this. It has a totally different effect, right? So, <clears throat> or even if you flipped it, you know, and like every other square or every other hexagon was blue on the outside and then green on the inside. And like, so all the surrounding ones were the opposite and all the ones around them were opposite. And they give you this assembly diagram. And to me, you could go and take and just, just copy this little part for yourself because for personal use and then color it because everybody loves all these coloring things. Why not use this to color and figure out your blanket assembly, right? So make your own little pattern. So Raylan, um, was it Raylan or Ellie? Anyway, Ellie, I think asked about how to read the pattern and I do go through that. I can go through just real quickly. I mean, the main tips on reading a pattern is find the pattern open it up. I mean, I'm going to, this, I'm going to breeze past this real quick. Find it, open it up, read everything top to bottom. If you have questions, put like a, a sticky and like write what your question is, um, or put like a dot there or something so you can go back over it. If you have a term that you don't know, underline the term. And then when you go back, go, okay, now I'm going to look up these terms. Okay. I'm going to breeze through. It's kind of like, <laughs> I'm going to relate it to reading the Bible. <laughs> Okay, so like if you ever read a Bible or read read something and you're like, like the begat section, you know, this person begat this person, begat this person, begat that you're reading or like reading heritage or lineage, you know, like, I don't know who these people are, but I got to get to the end so I can find out what happened. So <laughs> that's kind of how this is. I, I don't say that on that video, but I'm just trying to say, read everything, underline what you don't know. And when you come to a term that you don't know, you come down here and you go, oh, okay, Oh, I don't know what, um, I don't know what, what is CH. Okay. Well, you should know that if you're already, if you're already, uh, knowing how to do it, cause it's a chain, but I'm saying if you find a, a, uh, something you don't know, okay. First DC counts as first DC. Well, what is that DC? Then what you do is you look it up in the back. Okay. You look up terms in the back to find out what it is. You go back here and you go, Oh, in the abbreviations of general instructions page, it is a double crochet. Ah, got it. And you can even write it here, say DC equals double crochet. Whatever you need, it's your book, right? Or it's your notes, right? And then um, obviously if you're doing a pattern on YouTube, then I would, I would watch the entire video, take notes, pause it, take the note, and then go back. And when you're ready and you've seen everything, um, then when you're ready, you can start, you can pause it and you can finish that thing. And then you can go and you, so you basically should watch all the videos from beginning to end. If you're trying to understand the pattern, because if you do that and you take some notes, it's going to cement it in your brain, especially if you put pen to paper and like write it down or type it up. Okay. So next thing. So I've read all the instructions. We go back. We're going to really kind of study the diagram and any charts that you have and make sure you kind of understand it, kind of work through it in your head before you start. Okay. And if you have to color something up, then color something up. If you have to color a chart, let's say this was a knitting chart, or let's say this was a chart that had, um, like it was showing the actual diagrams of the stitches. You could even say, okay, I know I want all double crochet to be purple. 
So I'm going to color them in purple on here. Okay, I need all the slip stitches because I got to pay attention to that. I'm going to color them red. You know, get like some red highlighters or something and, and highlight the, them and put them, like keep, keep a pack of multiple colors of highlighters in your bag so you can highlight patterns and charts and stuff. And so you can really see like in, in knitting, if you, if you highlight like a right and left different, like on a cable, you'll, you'll see them when they, when they come up. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see what else do I want to show you before I move on. Oh, that's another one. Okay. So that's that one. Let me look at my um, questions real quick. Cause I've been talking a lot. Okay. Raylan says she needs a video. Okay. Ellie says, what about patterns without pictures? That's what, that's why it's important. Um, Ellie is to, um, you, well, study the one picture that kind of sold you on it. You can really look at it and, and kind of, and notice it. And so when you, when you start reading the pattern, you can go back and kind of pick out, oh, oh, they started right here. Or, no, 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 they're starting on the outside. And oh, okay, that's the color they're talking about. So like, and look up that color. So say you're not going to actually use the, the yarn that's being used, but if there's multiple colors, what you do is you can kind of Google it online. Even if it's a discontinued yarn, sometimes you can find that color and you could pick it out and you go, oh, okay, that antique is this one here. And the eggplant is actually this one and rose is this one. And so then you can kind of tell where you are. So sometimes you just need to do an extra little step. Don't give up. And, you know, and once you get it done, you're going to feel so much better, right? Um, just go through it. I mean, I've had to read through a pattern or like a section a couple of times and there might be like a trouble spot and you'd be like, okay, I'm having trouble, um, figuring out this one particular part it's saying to, and then you could just say like, like maybe a few words and, and in quotes, you'd be like, okay, it's saying to do something like say the technique, don't give everybody the whole pattern because that's, that's a copyright issue. But if it's a technique, you can totally ask, like they're asking me to do this what, what's a blanket stitch? You know, I don't know what a blanket stitch is and they're not explaining it. So you can, you can look up techniques. Um, oh yeah, Ellie. Okay. It was you. Thank you. Patricia says, do you know how to crochet corner to corner blanket? Um, I, I can, yeah, I'm not going to be doing that today, but, um, Michael, Michael Selick has a lot of, um, videos on corner to corner blankets. Carol could probably find one for you and, um, and give you a link. I don't have one currently, but I mean, if you guys, if you guys like my teaching style and you want me to make a corner to corner blanket, let me know. I haven't had anybody request that from me yet. So, um, but yeah, Michael, uh, Mikey at the crochet crowd, uh, has several and, um, yeah. So let's see, here's a link for the tutorial. Thank you, Carol. Uh, Linda says, I've always had problems with crochet directions. Um, Kathleen John says, can you crochet a square blanket as I've only seen them, uh, sagging in the middle? Hmm. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm not sure what, can you elaborate on that, Kathleen? Um, Ellie says, okay, uh, it's one of the crochet knit, um, uh, Oh, okay. It's a crochet of the month club knit thing. Okay. It's in a leaflet contact Ellie. If you have, let me, let me flip the camera. Hey, okay. Here's a tip. Wow. I'm sorry. It's really bright on me. Isn't it? Does that bother y'all? Ah, sorry. I have a lighting thing and it's, it's for the table, but not for my face. Anyway. Um, if you, if you have like a crochet of the month club or whatever, Go back and read your stuff because you may be able to contact the designer or ask them, you know, say, I have a question for the designer. I'm having trouble. Like maybe there's a problem spot or whatever, like approach where you got the pattern from and find, wow, I'm, I'm seeing that I'm buffering to myself. So hopefully you guys can see me. Um, anyway, those clubs and stuff like, um, or say you say you find something from Yarn Inspirations online, or you find something from Red Heart online. Um, you buy a pattern on Ravelry. Contact the point that you purchased it from, okay? Because it could have a help desk, um, a bigger designer. I I don't have it, but a bigger designer might actually have. Um, when it says help, mine says help desk, but it's really just me, and I'm like slammed. I don't have time. I, not that I don't have time, but I just. There's too much, there's too much volume for me to answer everything. But some of these bigger companies and, and other designers may have like an assistant that helps them answer questions. So definitely contact them because 
asking me to explain someone else's pattern or asking someone else to plain, explain someone else's pattern, not theirs, is not going to be as good as asking the person who actually did it. If you're asking for a technique, that's different. But if you're asking for a whole pattern or a section of a pattern, then ask them. And of course, if you're in a loom along group or something and people are kind of, or loom along, crochet along, knit along group, whatever, if you're in one of those stitch along groups, then you, other people who are working on it currently at that time are totally appropriate to ask. It's just you consider the appropriateness of who you're asking and what you're asking. You know what I mean? It's just kind of a courtesy thing. So that's a little pet peeve with most all designers. Um, yeah, okay, so um, let me scroll down. Hi, Deborah. I see you. Ellie says Annie's. Oh, Raylan says have to sign off. I'm sorry. Sorry I didn't get to you in time. Hopefully she comes back and she says hi. Oh, yes. And Patricia, um, um, there's a link in there if you haven't seen it. Carol has included the link for the uh, corner to corner, the C to C Afghan. Oh, if you see see the word C to C, if you're just learning crochet, C to C is corner to corner. So it also means something else and something else. I'm trying to remember what the C to C was. Carol and I were talking about that the other day. I'm trying to remember what that is. I think it has, I'm drawing a blank as to what that was, but anyway, yeah, help desk. Okay. So sorry, I'm caught up. Okay. So that was the book stuff, but onto the t-shirt yarn. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, onto the t-shirt yarn. Okay. So yesterday, if you saw, we made t-shirt yarn. If you did not see that kind of raise your hand and let me know. I mean, I could do a very short version of that right now. Um, but we made the t-shirt yarn. So if you go to yesterday's video for t-shirt yarn for the, um, the knitting and yarn day, go check that out. And then, oh, you're welcome, Allie. That's fine. That's, you're welcome. Hopefully the links help. Um, the, um, there's also stuff for loom knitting and needle knitting as well. And it's like a pattern reading. There's actually a pattern reading, um, playlist as well. So, Okay, so I've got this one, and this is what we worked on um, for needle knitting. And so I'm going to pull it off, and I'm going to frog it, and I'm going to show you this yarn. So we made this yesterday, t-shirt yarn, and I still, I still haven't measured it. Let me just go ahead and measure it and tell you how big it is. Pulling out my dill. I'm going to measure. Hold on. Radio silence. Okay, it is about two inches. All right. Well, good. I cut it at two inches. That was a good guess. I eyeballed that yesterday, and I told everybody, I think it's an inch and a quarter or two inches. So um, so what I'll do is I'm going to start chaining. I'm going to show you the thickness of this, and then I'm going to do, um, I'm going to show the bulky getting three strands out of one ball, um, I had showed it several years ago and I just did a slip knot with a single and then pulled the three strands, but I like doing with the three all in one and someone's got a video out right now that it's funny. I asked her, I found a technique that she was featuring from somebody else's and, and I was like, Ooh, I like that technique for something else like this, this other thing. And, uh, she was like, no, you can't feature that and, and give props to me and the person who did it. But then like the next day, she like made a, made a video on something I've done. I was like, why'd you do that? I mean, it's fine, but it was just kind of like, hmm, that's weird. But she did this little three strand bulky thing. So I'll give her credit. She, Brianna K, she, she did this little thing where she zigzag S's and starts this three strand in one. So sort of what I saw from her and my technique. So I'm just being honest. I, that's what I had seen. So I'm going to do it. I did it yesterday. I'm going to do it again today just so that. Whoever missed it can see it as it applies to crochet. And then, wow, can't find the end of my ball here. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to flip and show you. You guys want to know how to get three strands from one ball and make it super bulky for a big fat hook or a big hook like this. Everybody ready? <laughs> okay. I'm going to flip. Okay. So we've got our t-shirt yarn and we've got this one here. Okay. So this is not a worsted weight. This is actually a bulky, um, number five. And you can see, first of all, you can, let's compare 
the two. This is two inches or one and three quarters. It depends. See how bulky this is? What we want to do is line this up in an S here. Okay, I'm, doing, I'm showing you two at the same time. So I've got this sort of snaky thing here. See what three strands looks like? So it's going to match more closely this one. So if you want to use a t-shirt yarn or want the other one and you want something like a super bulky, then you're going to do this. Um, with either one, of course, you make a slip knot and then you're going to put it on your hook, right? So you can, you can do that. And this is how you're going to use this. And I'll actually show you how to, um, uh, how to, how to add in uh, an extra strand. But this one right here, if we want to make this one bulky, what we do is make our slip knot. Okay, so we've got the three strands together. You've got your tail here. You can cut or leave this loop here. And then um, you've got this hole, all right? So you can put your fingers through the hole. And, um, and this is going to be, or I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm putting my fingers through the hole. Let's go ahead and put this on your hook. And then we're going to put my fingers through this hole here, and we're going to grab this extra strand. See, the ball is right here. Put your fingers through this and pull through. And so this is how you create that longer strand. Oh, that's the middle of the yarn here. So we're going to have um, three strands held as one. See how that works? And so it's together here. So if you have a solid, what... Um, and if you, if you have a solid yarn, this works really well. If you have a variegated, you may have a bit of a, uh, a difference here because of the color change. So if you're not worried about that, then, um, it, your pattern will change. If you're tired of seeing the same pattern in the same, uh, like color patterning in the same thing that you do all the time, then it will change up if you do this. Otherwise you can pull three balls and get them all, um, hopefully to line up. So, um, you just start crocheting and making your, um, your chain, you know, and then start joining up. So you do your foundation row or your chainless foundation or whatever you're starting on. And then you've got this nice, big, bulky, I'm going to show you what it looks like compared to the t-shirt yarn that I made. Cause I think it's good to make those comparisons. Now I got here and I'm like, Oh, don't keep going. There's this little uh, loop here. So all I do, I'll get this middle of the part that got knotted. All I do is pull it through. Okay. See, and then it continues, right? And so it's not knotted on, but what happens when you get to the end of your line? Well, you're, you're going to have to either do like, say, do a Russian join, or you have to do a knot or something like that. I would try doing a Russian join. If it's a if it's an animal fiber, you can do a, a spit splice. You like, um, you can actually pull apart the fiber and stick them together and kind of like wet it and rub it together. Um, Very Pink Knits does a, um, she calls it a spit splice. It actually works pretty well, but it's only with like natural animal fiber because it can stick to each other like that and stay with the friction. So um, I'm just going to do a couple more of these chains here. Okay. And if you were, if you were, um, let's, let's do changing color real quick. If I've got my scissors, okay, I've got my scissors here and now I want to put in, say we're changing color with another bulky. Well, you're going to do the same where you have, um, you can have your slip knot, but I've already got this here and, and it's going to be super bulky. So, um, I don't like to put the slip knot in. Okay, so I'm going to make sure this is nice and long. Um, and then I go back here and I can have, let's say I've got a row already going. Um, I'm ready to, to change. Um, if I was doing a double crochet, I've already got this loop over here. And then I would need to put another loop on and I draw that final loop up in that color change. So um, like say I was going to color change here in the middle of my chain. Then um, I'm going to match up my tails here kind of hold them together like this and then I can uh, chain this through here see and then work it like that and so this 
these right here will end up getting tied in later. And I'm, I'm doing this on the foundation row, but you don't really do that. I'm just, I'm just trying to give you a quick changing here because this is live and I'm just trying to get going. So you can actually um, weave those in later and then you won't have this, um, you won't have like a bulky knot or anything like that. So the next one is this one. And I did want you to see, I did want you to see this compared to the t-shirt yarn. So I need to put this, I need to work this in this um, hook. This hook is a, it's from Chow Gu. It's a P16, uh, 16, US 16 or 11 and a half millimeter if you can read that. Okay. Pam, no, I don't have a video on the chainless foundation. If you guys want one, I can certainly make one. Um, all right, so I'm going to do a chain in this one. You can see the comparison. And again, uh, I talked about yesterday how you can change, um, you can change the, uh, the thickness of this t-shirt yarn simply by cutting it thinner. Okay. So here is this one right here. See how nice that looks. Okay. And that is the comparison with three here. So this is how they compare. So I had to get in order to get the same size. Now I had to use more chains on this one. Um, but it bulks up, um, as tall. So, um, this one is probably one and a half times the amount of chains to make this length here, but, and see, but see how bulky the stitch is, right? So anyway, does that, is that helpful for you guys? And then if I was to change the, the color of this one here, it's the same thing. You just pull it straight on through, you know, if you're on to the next one, you just pull the next one through and then you leave, you can leave that tail back here. Um, you can also trap in the old color and then just when you've, when you're gotten, when you're on to the last thing, so say you're on a triple or whatever, whatever the last, um, thing is when you pull the, the last loop through, that's your color. It's really that's that's really the best way to do it and then you chain up and then turn and then start your row so um kira pratt kira pratt um she yeah the t-shirt video um from yesterday is if you go to i don't have it on the playlist yet on this channel um i have it on um if you scroll through the main feed then you'll see it um, and if you click share, um, and actually I'm kind of selling Carol at the same time, if, if you're on a desktop or laptop, if you click share, even on a phone, you can also hit copy link and then you can paste it in here if you want, but you, and, and you can do that to find it for yourself later, but you can also use that. Also, if you share one of my videos, of course it will be on your chat, on your profile. And so you can find it as well. But until I have it in the playlist area on my Facebook page, um, the video, you'll have to find it in the, um, the feed. So usually the videos from the last week or so will be on just my news feed, but they may not be in my playlist. But if you go to the Good Knit Kisses, um, I'm going to flip around yeah, looking at my hands. <laughs> Sorry, just looking at my hands. Talk. Um, if you go to the good knit kisses page, like you're watching this from the good knit kisses page, but it may be in your feed, you're going to need to click on good knit kisses and then click on videos. It's going to be in your, your left hand side and it'll say videos. I think it's in your left hand side. Um, or if you're on a, um, a mobile device, it's probably going to be across the top and you click videos and then there'll be some playlists. Um, currently this past week is not in the playlists. Um, so anyway, but you'll be able to click on those and find them. And usually the first one is going to be the most current that is in the playlist. So, um, the last five minutes of that 38 minute video is me laughing about something ridiculous. And so I posted the video. So the video before this is a video that I uploaded, <laughs> which, cause I was just laughing at myself. Actually, I put it on, um, I, I just put that one on YouTube and then it, pushed it to my page, but, um, 
I will be making a separate video with just the t-shirt and I might just make it without sound and make it like super fast if that's something that you guys like. And since I'm on here live, I'm going to go ahead and ask you for feedback. So if I have people on here hanging out and want to please tell me, do you like seeing those videos that shows something like super fast, how to do something from beginning to end, no talking, and it's like, boom, it just goes fast. So please tell me if you like the fast stuff or do you like both or do you prefer talking? I feel like American, not American Idol, what is the lock in your votes now? AFV, America's Funniest Videos. Lock in your votes now. <laughs> okay, we've got, let's see, we're getting some, some people. Votes are coming in. Votes are coming in. Oh, yes, please. Talking, Betty says. Kira likes both. Debbie says both. Angelique says talking. Okay. So, a quickie explanation uh, or a long explanation is probably what I should ask, too. But you guys are here watching me, so you probably do like me talking. But having a quick video with no talking, I mean, I can see that beneficial. Be like, okay, now I know what's happening from beginning to end. Maybe I want to listen. Fast. Sometimes is good, but still we're talking. Hmm. Okay. Kind of an overview. <clears throat> I like to get feedback from you guys. I mean, I don't like to, nobody likes to hear criticism when it's being mean, but I mean, I, I can take constructive criticism. If someone's like, Hey, I like what you're doing, but what if, you know what I mean? <laughs> like I'm, well, I'm open to it. Um, I hate when people are like, your music's loud, turn it down. You know, I'm like, well, I can't change it after the fact. I'm sorry that it's loud, but you know, sometimes slow motion, Debbie. Yeah, I know. And I'm thinking those slow motion videos, like they're more like appropriate as a separate video. Cause I, I struggle with that. It's like, well, do I show slow motion in the video? Because if I do that, it makes the video longer, you know? So it's a struggle, video makers. I mean, I want to do what helps you, but, um, I mean, I don't want to waste my time, um, making all kinds of things that may not necessarily be what you want. So anyway, what else was I going to show you? I think that was everything. Did anyone need me to show the t-shirt thing as quick as I can? I think we're good. Um, some from slow motion. Angelique says, yes. Okay. Thank you for your feedback. I appreciate it. It is helpful. <laughs> uh, tomorrow is, um, if I can. Okay. Thanks, Kira. Tomorrow is, um, social media day and social media day is really meant to help you with questions that you have not necessarily my agenda but something that someone is like i i'm having trouble uploading videos on youtube like i need help or um hey i want to do facebook live videos on my channel but i don't know how to do it or you know how do i change the thumbnail how on um, on a Facebook video, how do I do this or that? You know what I mean? Like, let me know what you're needing. Um, <clears throat> Debbie says, have you been sending out notifications? You're going live. I've only gotten one this week. Okay. So, um, I know that if you go to my events, you can hit subscribe and I would just do that. And I'm not sure if that's actually what helps you see this, but I, what also helps is if you, obviously you've liked my page, but if you're on the page, so again, if you're watching this in your news feed right now, you may need to like right click. Okay. I know it's different if you're on your phone, so you have to do this later, but, um, <clears throat> cause otherwise you'll miss my instructions. <laughs> but right, if you're on a desktop or laptop, right click on the, um, uh, the, on the word good knit kisses and, and tell it to like open a new tab or a new window or something and then go to the actual page make sure you've hit like and then at the top like kind of to the left of the word like no to the right of the word like 
there's somewhere where you can click on settings or like a gear button or something like that. And it says, um, <clears throat> see first and you want to see first. And so what it does is when you open up your news feed, it puts me at the top or near the top. If you've got like friends that says see first, I mean, obviously your family, you want to see first, but I'm saying like it puts you in those first 10 posts or whatever. I mean, if you have everything see first, then it's, it's not going to work for you. But, um, I think when you also hit see first, what happens is if that person goes live, um, and also if you friend me, um, I think you get the, the notification that I went live. But, um, if you, if you, um, anyway, you should get like a notification on your phone or something like that. Now, if you're on a computer, um, you're not going to get the notification unless you've got like my page up and then you go to it, you know, the times that I try and start, I, honestly, I'm sorry that I'm not st starting at the same times. It's just, I'm trying to work around having people in my house and getting ready. And if I have a kid thing and, you know, so sometimes things change just because it's real around here. <laughs> so, um, eight o'clock, eight fifteen, eight thirty, eight forty five, nine o'clock, all central standard time. So if you haven't seen me come on at 815 refresh at 830 and you should see me or refresh 15 minutes later and you'll see me um anyway yeah you can friend me here's the deal so um facebook <laughs> facebook I, I had two accounts and i shouldn't have i have one that says kristen mangus and then i had one that said kristen at good knit kisses and it was an actual profile and i should not have had it and then they said bam you're a public figure you have to have a public figure page. And so don't get confused when you look for Kristen Mangus. If you see Kristen Mangus and it's a public figure page, like if you go to it and it has you like it, that is not my profile. That is my public figure page and you're welcome to like it and you're welcome to follow me there. And I might post different things there. Um, there's a picture of me with um, Lisa Nelson and she's laughing and we're in like a yarn, uh, we're in Hobby Lobby. So if you see that picture, you're at the wrong page. Um, so you want to go to Kristen Mangus that lets you hit add like, I mean, add friend. If you can't add me as a friend, then message me here and then I can see if I can add you a friend. Now, if we both don't have our settings right <laughs> to be able to add each other, then one of us has to change something in order to do it. And I can tell you, I'm probably going to ask you, can you make a change? Because um, I can't make that change easily. And I'm usually like, on the road, on the fly doing stuff. And I can't, I can't make that change from a mobile device or at least that I've seen. So, or easy. <laughs> so I'm sorry, but I don't mind friending you. I just, um, it may or may not block it. I think if you're already friends with somebody I'm friends with, I think it lets you add friend. That is a long winded answer. But anyway, um, and also if you message me at the Kristen Mangus um, public figure page. It sounds so funny to say I'm a public figure. Um, but if you message me there, that's not my regular message inbox, but I totally can get them. Um, and in fact, if you, if I'm not answering you on my personal one, you can message me here. You can message me at the public figure one. And it actually comes through easier for, you know, on those perfect personal pages or profiles, you know, Facebook does that weird thing where it goes into the other box and I've actually noticed there's like an archived other box and I've gone in there one time and I'm like, oh my gosh, there's a message from 2009 or 10 or something. And I'm like, and I don't know if I should answer it, you know, and then they lash out at me because I took so long or what. So anyway, that went on for a while. Hmm. Sorry. Okay. So Debbie says you showed right up on my page, but I always go to my emails first. Yeah, I don't email it out. I haven't been putting them in a newsletter, although I may start sending out my newsletter that has um, like recapped blogs of what is happening. So anyway, that's it. So you guys, thank you for sticking it out with me and hanging out with me today. Tomorrow, again, is social media day. If you have a question and you need help with, like we just kind of answered a social media question that actually... That actually is helpful. I wonder if I should go through that. Does anybody want to know how to, you know what, how to do stuff in the Good Knit Kisses Luminant and Craft Club group? I can show you how to do stuff, like show my computer how to do stuff in that group. 
I could do that. So I think that's what we'll do tomorrow. Um, and then next week, uh, Carol tells me that, um, I need to do a loom video on, um, uh, the infinity loom or an S loom. And so I think I'm going to get my, my loom out and show you. I also have the homework from the loom stuff, um, from this week, but I decided to do the zippy thing. So if you want to still work on the, um, three by one rib scarf, go back to the loom video and check that out. And I will show you my progress next week. I actually threw it up on the zippy loom cause I want to see what it looks like and make a little pattern for you. And then we'll also, um, I'll be putting together that zippy video and it'll come out next week on my YouTube channel. And it is like a more quick, like when y'all said, Oh, I want a quick video. It'll be a quick connecting video. And then I'll be doing an actual review. So, um, cause I know I have some loom knitters on here. And so that's why I'm telling you loom stuff on a crochet day. Uh, Debbie says I was getting emails. I guess they were from Facebook. It would tell me when you were getting ready to go live. And then one that said you were live. Oh yeah. Well, it could have been from the loom knit, uh, craft club because I, there was a, the first week I, I made announcements in the craft club and said, Hey, I'm going to go live. But in that group, I wasn't getting as much feedback in that short time period because I was only doing it for like 10 or 15 minutes. So I stopped doing that and I was doing it on my own profile and I was doing it on the page. And I was like, well, now that people know I'm going live daily, there's no reason for me to be redundant and be like, look at me, I'm out there. It's like, if you know that you want to see me, now you know my schedule. So be sure and tell people. I mean, like if you, if you have other friends who knit or craft or loom knit or, you know, crochet or whatever, um, let them know and you can share it. You can share it on your profile or page, you know, be like, Hey, if you're interested in X, Y, Z, you know, come check her out. Um, Betty says, I'm still working on the hexagon, usually in the school pickup line. It's going to be big since it's on the 24 peg loom. Awesome. I'm glad you're still working on it. That's great. I have another idea for it too, that I'll be doing soon. So anyway, all right, you guys have a great day. I, I hope you make it a good one and we will see you tomorrow. Bye. Send me out loves and hearts. <laughs> oh, Carol just confessed. Carol says she's so bad. She hasn't started her homework. <sighs> Get to work, girl. <laughs> All right. Bye, y'all.